Good morning, church. Oh, it's lovely to see you all here today um, at Chowdin Church here at Strong Point Centre. And I'm so glad that you've managed to come in person because I think it's really important that we can fellowship together because the Spirit of the Lord is here with us. We are a Bible-believing church and we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of this church. And Jesus says that he will build his church upon this rock. Jesus says that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. And guess what Jesus also said in Luke chapter 4? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So I know as human beings, sometimes we come with baggage, don't we? We come with feelings of loss, grief, hurt, sometimes joy. And the Lord is waiting to hear from us today as we set aside all our human feelings. And as the band leads us in worship, sometimes we sing along, don't we, because we know the words to the songs and they are up on the screen. But it is lovely to do it intentionally and just to worship. Let us just be absorbed in worship because the Spirit of the Lord is here and is eager to fellowship with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. It's good to see you all. For our first song, we are going to sing a song of joy, a song of victory that gives a wonderful picture of Jesus in all of his glory, shining like the sun. And it talks about the year of Jubilee, which in God's word talks about the year where the captives are set free from slavery. So let's offer up our spirit in worship in the freedom and knowledge of what Jesus brings us. If you're able to, please stand. Let's sing These Are the Days of Elijah. Jubilee, and out of science till salvation. Behold, behold. 
like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of science, hell, salvation. Everyone needs compassion, the love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. The Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill my life again, I give my life to Father, everything I believe in, now I Is 
and shine a light. Sing just our voices. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Once more, shine your light. Shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, Savior, He can move the and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Please take your seats, thank you um, Thank you to the band for leading us in worship um, Yesterday was a really lovely day we were here at church doing Alpha, and it was the Holy Spirit weekend, and Ruth cleverly condensed the weekend into one day. So it was lovely just to fellowship with each other and learning about the Holy Spirit and then inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives um, so that we can uh, be appropriated with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, so... I just wanted us to perhaps pray together with the knowledge that the Holy Spirit is here to help us. Um, ever since I learned uh, about the sparrow in the Bible, it was actually very significant to me that God knows about the sparrow. The sparrow is a very small bird and it is very vulnerable and it can be uh, you know, attacked by bigger birds like the, like, like the hawk, like like the eagle and stuff. But God knows how many sparrows are there and he knows when every sparrow falls to the ground. And so God really cares about us, he's the human beings that he created in his image. And I know, uh, you know, the loss of Terry has left us with shock, grief, and a sense of loss. Um, but the Lord is ready to, to heal us as we come as we grieve with a uh, you know as people with with hope with a sense of hope he's here waiting for us to be healed by the spirit by his spirit so perhaps we could take a moment it's easy when we can just pray for you isn't it at the top here but i'd like us to take a moment to pray whether you want to pray with the person next to you whether you want to pray quietly in your heart just to allow the Spirit of God to saturate us and allow the healing that comes from the Spirit of God to work within us. The Lord knows, the Lord knew when Terry was going to fall. We didn't. And the Lord wants to heal us from that. And the Lord is ready to move on with us as he heals us.
Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are more of more value than Mary sparrows. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31. Father, we just receive the comfort that comes from your word. That nothing escapes you, Lord. You are in control. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen the way they do. And sometimes we don't see the very next step that we need to take. But Lord, you do. And we thank you for your perfect will. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that heals us, that comforts us. Father, we pray for Margaret. We pray for Stephen, Mark and Vanessa and their families. Lord, as they are grieving the loss of their loved husband and father and grandfather. We just commit this family in your hands, Lord, and we pray for all those that are grieving the loss of their loved one. We thank you, Father, that you are in control and your spirit heals us and loves us dearly. We commit this church, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that you are the head of the church and you will build your church. There is no force of hell that will succeed against your church. For that, we give you thanks. We thank you, Father, for your resources that are available through the Spirit that empowers us, weak mortals, to do your work. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray for our children as they go to um, Strong Point Kids. We pray, Father, that you be with them too, Lord, as they learn your word. And we thank you for the leaders and teachers that are guiding them. Amen. We'll let you go, children. I'd like to say I do my homework and I usually know what the speaker is going to talk about. <laughs> and I can give you a clue before the speaker comes up. But today I actually don't know what you're going to talk about, Stuart. So would you like to, would you like to come up and tell us what you're going to talk about? <laughs> and then talk about what you're going to talk about. <laughs> um, so Father, we just give you thanks for Stuart and the service that he gives um, that he avails, he avails himself to you, Father, and you work through him um, as your servant and as your child. So, Lord, we just pray that he may speak your word, challenge us, empower us, equip us, and leave us changed, Lord, through the word that Stuart is going to tell us, the word that has come from you. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to be with you. It's lovely to see uh, so many familiar faces and some new faces as well. That's really good. Uh, we've been in our studies of Immerse, we've been, and I use this word, plowing through the uh, prophets. And, um, and as I've said before, a lot of it is doom and gloom uh, in, in the Old Testament prophets' uh, stories. But I found one little glimpse of hope well, there's more than one little glimpse of hope. We, 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 we spent a long time going through Jeremiah. We very briefly looked at Obadiah. Yeah, anybody know the story of Obadiah? A little bit. And then we moved into Ezekiel, and we're starting to go through Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel chapter 18, there's an interesting story. And Ezekiel has a bit of a sermon. In fact, he's really clever because he's got almost a three-point sermon, so he's ahead of the time uh, with his three-point sermon. And uh, I'm going to look at it first, and uh, the title of today's talk is uh, It's Up to You. It's Up to You, Ezekiel 18. Uh, I'll get the right button to press here. Will it move on? There we go. 
So if you, if you follow us on your phones or your Bible, it's Ezekiel chapter 18. And it says, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. So that was the basic essence of it. He was saying, look, there's this proverb that's been grown around everybody, and uh, God doesn't want you to use it anymore because it isn't correct. And um, the proverb actually reflected, if you wanted to check it up in Jeremiah and in Lamentations, and it's a bit, another title we often see it is the sins of the father. Where we sometimes say, well, you know, that person's not a good person because their father was a bad person. So he's got the sins of the father. Whatever the father did wrong is being passed on to the son. And, um, and it's a bit like saying the fathers have eaten bad meat and the sons are getting the bad stomach to cope with it. Uh, the fathers have eaten the bad meat and the sons are getting the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the bad the pain in the stomach to cope with it. So this idea was popular and um, God told the prophet to tell the people to stop using this proverb. A proverb is just a phrase that becomes sort of gom common knowledge amongst the people. And why did he tell them to stop? Because it was unfair. It was unfair to blame the present situation on something that had happened in the past. And it was unfair because God didn't punish the fathers, uh, didn't want to punish the fathers. It got upset. Sorry, it, it, God didn't start again. God, it was unfair because you don't punish fathers and you don't punish the sons for the sin of the fathers. So he said, you haven't got to use this proverb. So what, what, what sort of things were there? Now we, we have proverbs. Just because it was a common phrase doesn't mean it was true. Just because it was used a lot doesn't mean that it was right. So some of the proverbs we use are, if it doesn't kill you, it will make you stronger. Yeah? Now think about it. I once had a vicar friend, I've still got a vicar friend, he's still alive, who decided a good visual would be on Easter to eat a daffodil. Somebody told him that daffodils won't kill you. So he ate a daffodil and then spent the next week in bed being violently sick. So if it doesn't kill you, it will make you stronger. It certainly didn't make him stronger that week. What about the phrase, the customer is always right? Is that true? No. To the shop assistant, it's a bit of a dirge, isn't it? It's a bit of a horrible thing because if they're trained, the customer's always right. They have to go with that. What about the pen is mightier than the sword? Is that true? So you're in a battle, you're in the army, you're fighting against the enemy, your bullets run out, so you get a pen out. That's going to solve the problem, isn't it? Yeah? The pen is mightier than the sword. Is the next one. The pen is mightier than the sword. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but you will never hurt me. Is that true? Eh? Words often hurt people more than sticks and stones, don't they? Words can actually get right inside of you. Sticks and stones might hurt you on the outside, but words can really hurt you inside. Another one, I mean, we could go here all day. Well, a stitch in time saves nine. Now, if somebody asked me to repair something with a stitch, it certainly wouldn't save nine stitches because it would probably make the situation a lot worse. A stitch in time saves nine. So he said, look, don't use this anymore. For everyone belongs to me, parents as well, 
And as the child, both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. So what he was saying is, just because the father sinned doesn't mean that the son is guilty of what the father's done. And he's really clever because um, this is his three-point sermon. He talks about three different scenarios. And the first one he talks about is this. Now, there's a lot of words here, so I'm going to have to read them out here. I'll try and read them so you understand. When you read it in Scripture, it comes across as a bit of a dirge, too much of it. But here we go. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols at his, of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relations with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone, but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not lend to them at an interest or take a profit from them. He withholds his hands from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties. He follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws. This man is righteous. He will surely live, declares the Lord. So in God's eyes, somebody who keeps those, and actually when you look at them loosely around the Ten Commandments, if somebody manages to do all those things, he shall not die. He will surely live. And then, he gives a picture of a son. Suppose he has a violent son who sheds his blood or does any of these other things though the father has not done any of them. He eats at the mountain shrines. He defies his neighbor's wife. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery. He does not return what he took in pledge. He looks to the idols. He does detestable things. He leads an interest and makes a profit. Will such a man live? He will not because he's done all these detestable things. He is to be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. Remember those words. His blood will be on his own head. I'm reading it off the back there and the light's shining on the screen, so that's why I'm moving side to side just to see the words. But suppose his son has a son who does all the sins his father commits. And though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not eat at the mountain, shri at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife he does not oppress anyone or require a pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery. He does not. He gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He withholds his hand from ill-treating the poor, takes no interest or profit from them. He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live. But his father will die for his own sin because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong amongst his brother, his people. So we see three different scenarios there, don't we? Where one person lives a righteous life, one person lives a good life, a bad life, and does all things wrong. But then the grandson sees what's gone on and decides that's not the way he wants to live his life. And each of the generations we see from that are going to have to answer for their own behavior. And the message is today for each one of us that each one of us stands before God as individuals and we will each have to answer for our own behavior. And we can't say, well, you know, I was brought up in a Christian family so that makes me a Christian. Or even, I go to Chaldean Church and there's some nice Christians there, so I'm a good Christian, so I'm all right. We can't use the things around us to affect those 
sort of decision. We're going to jump up to uh, verse 20. Gets a bit smaller, doesn't it? <laughs> I shall open my Bible and read it there. It'll be easier. Verse 20. Just bear with me. It says, The soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. So you see, it just re-emphasizes that we are all individuals. We are individually answerable to God. We can't ride on the back of somebody else's good doing or bad doing. We are all individuals. Sin came into the world. Two exceptions to this rule about sin in people's lives are two people who escaped it. And one of them was Adam, and one of them was Jesus. Adam came into the world sinless, but that didn't last very long, did it? Because sin came in to him and into the world for each one of us. Each one of us has sin rooted in Adam, in Adam's disobedience. And Jesus came into the world and we, we were, told, were told he was without sin. He had no sin at all. And he was our means for righteousness. Romans really explains this really well. Um, in, in, if, and if you have your Bibles, you can follow it. Uh, it's a bit of a jargon, but it expresses it really well. Romans 5, verse 17 says, it says, For if by the trespass of one man, in other words, Adam, death reigned through one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? So sin came into the world from Adam, but much more we have forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Consequently, as a result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through disobedience of the one man the many were sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. So we see Adam's disobedience brought sin into the world, but the obedience of Jesus Christ, the obedience to go to the cross for each one of us, brings us life, brings us eternal life. And just at the end there, it says, uh, Therefore, you Israelites, I will judge each one of you according to your own ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent. Turn away from all your offenses. Then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourself of all the offenses you have committed and, and get a new heart and a new spirit. And really what it's saying there is that we can try and do all the good things. We can try and be good people. Every day we get up and think, I get up and think, now I'm going to be nice as much as I can to everybody. Sometimes it doesn't last very long. But we can try and do the right things. We can try not to sin. But we live in a fallen world. We find sin just tries to get at us, tries to, uh, to, to make us go down the wrong road. And yet when we trust in Jesus, it says we can get a new heart and a new spirit. Something different changes. We can become a new person. And we, we hear the expression born again, doesn't it? We get a new heart and a new spirit. And it's not just about us trying to live a good life. It says about us trusting in what God has done for us through Jesus. When we do that, we can be different. The, uh, the, 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 
the, the old songwriters wrote, uh, all to Jesus I surrender. How often do we actually do that in our lives? How often do we carry worry and anxiety with us instead of just saying, all to Jesus I surrender? And that's what he's asking us to do. He says, I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit and you can just give everything to me. Can we not trust the God of the universe? Can we not trust the God who created all things? Can we not trust him with our daily lives? Can we not give him everything? We have decisions to make on a daily basis. Do we decide to follow him? Or do we decide to follow our own ways? What this is saying is, you've got a decision. You're an individual. You've got a decision. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And then the words go on further on. And uh, I follow him. Um, I don't know why, but at the end of, uh, as I was preparing yesterday, a song that we used to sing years and years ago in Sunday school came to my head. It might be of some value to you now. You probably all know it. We used to sing, you can't get to heaven on a winter's bus because a winter's bus don't go that far. And then I looked it up on Google and said, you can't get to heaven on something, something. You can't get to heaven on, what was the one I wrote? I wrote one of them down because I thought it was funny. Find it on my last sheet. You can't get to heaven. You can't get to heaven in dirty jeans. (laughs) Because heaven's got no washing machines. <laughs> and I've written this, and I just want you to finish this off with your own words. I don't know whether they'll rhyme with it, but you can't get to heaven on someone else's face because you can't get to heaven on someone else's face because answers on a postcard <laughs> to me. Maybe if you want to think about that during the week, you can't get to heaven on someone else's face because. And and the other thing that struck me was how many sort of things do we carry around with us that we've heard? How many proverbs have we heard in our lives that we sort of rest rest on, but actually they're not really true? What are we building our faith on that isn't actually true? You can't get to heaven on someone else's face. It's up to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this story and uh, this exposition in Ezekiel uh, that it was to make to the people. Uh, And Father, we each have areas in our lives that need speaking into, that need correcting. And um, we we grow with so many... uh, prejudices and thoughts and uh, that just aren't right in your eyes. And uh, Father, will you just help us and instruct us during the coming week uh, just to make those corrections we need in our lives. And Father, above all, help us just to trust in you. You've given us a new heart and a new spirit. Help us to have a spirit of trust in you, Father, as we go about our daily lives. So bless each one of us, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Stuart. So we know that we have a faithful God who will respond when we call on him. It says in his word in Romans 10 that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if we need to call on him now for whatever may have touched us from Stuart's message, be safe in the knowledge that he is faithful and he will answer.
Faithful one, so unchanging. for one.
to you again and again I call out to you again and again Though the tears might fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart will fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Where there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. Where there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. For you shine with glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I sing, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, yes, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When sorrow comes my way, you are the shield around. in the fight I hear you call my name Jesus I am coming walking on the waves reaching for the light the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength in the darkness I'll dance in the shadows I'll sing the joy of the Lord is the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Just the voices. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Join us with his praise. Bless the name of Jesus. It's for freedom we are saved. Freedom is contagious. Come and join us with his praise. Bless the name of Jesus. It's for freedom we are saved. Look down. Our chains are on the floor. Look up. Amazing. The last bit there felt like we were going to party, didn't it? But it's so true. Uh, our chains are on the floor. And it is for freedom that we've been set free by our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I, I, what I've taken away from Stuart's message is that um, I know sometimes we're busy, aren't we, as Christians? We, 
We want to help in the church of God. We want to do service. Um, but we also need to remember that we will face the Lord and he wants that personal relationship with us, not based on the work that we do, not based on what other people to our sides are doing. It's our faith and our personal relationship that God is after. So uh, thank you, Stuart, for, for bringing that message. I know I've summarized it in a different way as he has said it, but that was my taking, that we will face the Lord on our own. We're not going to say, oh, Lord, I belong to the welcome team, so judge us as a welcome team. Uh, I've just picked that as a random service. Um, just uh, to move on to some notices. So the ladies... Um, Coffee morning is on Saturday, the 14th of December at 10.30 a.m. You are invited to a Christmas coffee morning, which is going to be held here at Chowdin Church Strong Point Center. Um, there will be some seasonal refreshments, carol, quiz, craft stall, and the guest speaker is Corinne Oliver. The cost for this is two pound. So if you would like to attend the ladies' coffee morning on the 14th of December at 10.30 here at Child in Strong Point, please see Heather. Um, I'm reliably informed that somebody celebrated their 80th birthday yesterday, and we would like to say happy belated birthday, Joyce Anderson. I hope you enjoyed your day. And I hope Paul Anderson, you spoiled your mum rotten yesterday. <laughs> He's laughing at me. Um, so, Alpha, stay curious. Try Alpha. We continue with the series next week after church. So, um, it'll be lovely for you to join us. Um, this, this, the series are, have been put on the Monday mailing. So you can click on the links and watch the videos. But honestly, there's nothing more special than being together and just having a chat and sharing our own experiences. So there's... Oh, I'm going to skip some of these. There's Christmas wreath making on the 30th of November 2024. Refreshments are included. The cost is £45. And um, some of that money, £15, will be uh, donated to handcraft, Handcrafted. Um, so if you'd like to know more information about Christmas wreath making on the 30th of November, please see Ruth Crichton. There's also a Christmas meal at the Shaky, um, which is being hosted by Chowdin Church. Uh, partnering with Handcrafted. So this is to um, host a free Christmas meal to those people that may not be able to um, or privileged to enjoy a Christmas meal. Um, you can donate £10, um, see Ruth, for uh, a meal for somebody. Equally, you could donate some gifts. The box was at the back. It's still at the back, at the bottom of that table. Um, And it involves, you know, it could be items like hats, gloves, socks, scarves, shampoo, and sweets. I don't advocate for sweets, but there you go. Some people still like sweets. I don't like sweets. <laughs> it's a medical thing in me. Um, there's drop-in on Wednesdays at 10.30 to 1 p.m. here at Strong Point. Uh, come along for a coffee and a friendly chat. There's also small groups um, on Tuesdays, 7.30 at the Strong Point Center. See Stuart for that. And every other Wednesday at Starbucks, this is for young people, young adults. You're all welcome in. See team. I think I can just pause as a young adult and, and rock up, can I, team? I'm young at heart. There's also the Thursday Ladies Prayer Fellowship at 10.30 um, on Thursdays. Please see Gloria. Please remember that there's also prayer service at 10 o'clock every Sunday downstairs. So on Friday, 
The 22nd is Terry Nichols' um, funeral. There will be a private service for the family and close friends at 1 o'clock at Seoul well, Crematorium. But there will be a service of Thanksgiving here at 1.45 at the Strong Point Centre. All of you are welcome, but would we'll kindly request that if you come as um, friends and family of Terry, as Chowdin, family of Terry and Margaret, if you could kindly um, go downstairs and watch the service being streamed live. Um, if you can't make it here, it will, you can still watch the service at home um, because it will be streamed live. We are expecting um, quite a lot of um, other friends and family of Terry, and they will be up here. With that, we bring the service to a close. Um, the joy boxes are at the back, so before you go downstairs for coffee and tea, if you would like to help with the work of the church, um, you can kindly um, donate to the joy box. Equally, you could give online as well. Um, so we'll see you downstairs for coffee and tea. So Father, we just uh, bring the service to a close and we just thank you that um, you encourage us, equip us. You've never left us on our own to figure out life by ourselves. You're here with us by your spirit. We thank you that your spirit comforts us, it guides us, it illuminates uh, the path for us. You direct our paths, our steps. You heal us. And we thank you for that. Amen.